we talked a lot about moving in faith rather than fear, but what does that really look like today? And how do we continue making bold and righteous moves for the kingdom when it feels like all the odds are stacked against us? Here to help us and inspire our faith, let's welcome our dear friend, the guy responsible for spreading revival through the Let Us Worship movement. We love him so much. Sean Foyt is here. Hey, how are you? All right, you made it. I did. Because you know, a lot of airlines are canceling. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a, it was a fight to get here. But I know, but I got you in did. Late last night and super grateful. Wow, you know, so much has happened since the last time you were here. But I just want to say right at the front that we're so proud of you. Thank you. And um, you're exactly the kind of guest that we're going to have on Daystar. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. And that so is much. a guest that's unashamed to speak the truth. And I mean, it's just amazing to me, even how the church has responded to Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've been on the soapbox talking about that. Right. And now, now I always balance it out, Sean, and I say that for women who've had an abortion, we love you and mm -hmm. God loves you mm -hmm. and God forgives. Somehow they want to make us, right. you know, mean and ugly, but how can we not celebrate uh, that decision being overturned? And yes, it's been given to the states, and yes, we still have more work to do. And yes, the church has got to step up and make room for women who get pregnant. Daystar's already done that. We've given money to John Hagee's ministry there in San Antonio, a beautiful place mm -hmm. for, for a place for women Sanctuary to go. Sanctuary of Hope. Sanctuary of Hope. Yeah. And there's many, many others across yeah. America and around the world. If you find yourself in that situation, I always have to say that stuff because we love these yeah. women. But I want to say, you know what? I interview the women, Sean, that 20 years from now come on this show and tell me the devastation of right. what has happened to them. Right. Even they pretend like everything's all great mm -hmm. and wonderful, mm -hmm. but you don't know the depression, right. the thoughts of suicide. Right. You don't know the condemnation that comes from the enemy mm -hmm. to right. women who have made this decision. Right. And and the thing is, is I mean, people say like the church has been doing the work. The church has led the way in pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. There's one, I think there's 10, nine or 10 pregnancy centers for every one Planned Parenthood. They've led the way in foster care. They've led the way in raising funds. So the church has been taking yeah. care of the number one uh, source of taking care of those women for years. And nobody knows that. So let's just give it up for what we have done. Yeah, in the church I mean, and what we can continue to do. Right. But it doesn't that doesn't mean that we can't celebrate a 50 year prayer request. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been praying for this since the 70s. I've been praying for this. I have this life band on. I've been praying for this every day since I was 16 years old. Mm. And so, I mean, it, it, it just blows my mind that people don't have this ability to thank God for something we've been asking him for for so long. Yeah, yeah. it's wild because I was in a mega church and they were talking about and celebrating this massive victory and people got up and started flipping off the person speaking and booing and <laughs> walked out of church. And we had a conversation with it about it with kind of the team and the people that were there. And, right. and I said, if we can't celebrate heavenly justice right. in church, then where are we right. going to be able to celebrate it? Right. And it, and it really is. I mean, it's, it's one of those culture issues where it's a dividing line in the sand. People have politicized it. It's not a political issue. It's a biblical issue. I didn't even know that it was a political issue, though. Am I naive for that? Like, I didn't realize <laughs> that people in the church could argue or yeah. defend it. Like, I thought I mean, it the, was the clear. abolishment of the constitutional <laughs> protection of child sacrifice mm -hmm. is a big deal. Yeah. And every Christian should be grateful. Mm -hmm. Because I was told, even as a teenager, like, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. I know before Marcus went to be with the Lord, he looked at me, I was probably around 2020, and he said, Roe v. Wade will be overturned, honey. I really believe it will Come be. On. And it has been. But, you know, um, some of the reactions of people in the church, I, the, and, and we're not going to name any names, but there was a, a pastor's wife sitting on a panel discussing yeah. abortion um, and, and, and basically saying that it's okay. Right. And that there's more scriptures in the Bible about love and forgiveness. And I'm just like, what in the world? You know, Sean, yeah. I just interviewed someone. I've, we've been interviewing a lot of people uh, near death experiences and interviewed a man that died for 11 hours. And uh, he, he went to heaven and there was a much, much more of the story. Um, it was, uh, was it Jim Woodford? Uh, you should look that up on I Demand because you would love to 
uh, on demand rather, because you love to watch it. But one of the things he said, his guardian angel was showing him heaven, but he was above it. He wasn't able to, he went, he didn't know he wasn't going to go into heaven, but he saw a, a building in the middle of heaven. And he said it wasn't made of brick and mortar, but it was uh, almost translucent, very beautiful. And mm -hmm. he just thought to himself, I wonder what that building is. And the angel said, that's where all the aborted babies go. This is the nursery of heaven. Wow. And so he asked his guardian angel, when were you assigned to me? And he said, at conception. Because wow. he said, at conception, there's an explosion that takes place. Wow. And an eternal soul yeah. is created. Wow. So you have to understand that we're not talking about right. somebody's body. We're talking about another body, an eternal soul right. that will live forever. Right. Like right. We, we don't get that, do we? Yeah, and I mean, you have... You, I mean, one of the favorite, my favorite stories is, you know, John the Baptist leaping in his womb yeah, with Jesus being yeah. in his, you know, in Mary's womb. And so I think he jumped even the son as as of God, yeah, you know, yeah. He provoked yeah. unborn babies to mm -hmm. testify, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those issues where it's a dividing line in the sand and the polarization I think is needed. It's it's difficult, mm -hmm. you know, for me to even grasp. I would have thought when I was praying in, in, in high school all the way through college and, and I would have thought millions of Christians would have taken to the streets. Mm -hmm. And we partied, we celebrated, we had a, had a big, you know, worship time in front of the Supreme Court. Weren't you, know. you there the day that it was over? We were there the day after. Okay. And, but we had been mobilizing worship and prayer around the Supreme Court mm -hmm. for 50 days. Mm. And I felt like the Lord called us to do that and um, just to bind that decision. Where yeah. were you when you found out and what was your reaction? I was, okay, so I was getting on a plane and I had a senator, U.S. senator text me and he said, because nobody knew when it was going to be released. Yeah. And he texted me and he said, there's snipers today on the top of the U.S. Supreme Court. He's like, we, we don't see this unless something crazy is going to happen. He's like, I think today's the day. Mm -hmm. And then the plane took off. No, thank, that's thank, I know. <laughs> thank like, God there was Wi-Fi okay. on it. I was like, <laughs> dear Jesus, how the Wi-Fi work? And, and it did on the plane. And so I was able to, to find out, you know, scrolling through Twitter, oh, my gosh, it happened. And, wow. you know, I was really, I just, I couldn't, I was so tired from the night before, and it was an early flight, but I couldn't sleep the whole flight. I was mm -hmm. just buzzing. I was just like, God, you are so faithful. You know, um, Jonathan Kahn had, uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn had shared something with me. Of course, he wrote the bestseller, The Harbinger. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talked about that, that when it, when Roe v. Wade would be overturned, there that would be a curse mm -hmm. that would be lifted off yeah. of America. So yeah. we can see, I think, greater revival. But here, I want to show Sean this and let him comment. Here, here are some apostate um, pastors uh, you wonder if the apostate church is alive and well. It is. Watch this. Oh, Lord, how long will women and girls be viewed as second-class citizens? Let us pray. Giver of choice. You have created us in your image and given us agency over our own bodies. We pray for all who partner with those in need of reproductive health care, we pray for the loss of life yet to come from forced childbirth and illegal abortion. We pray for those who are not of the same mind regarding reproductive rights. Oh Lord, how long will women and girls be viewed as second-class citizens? How long before women and girls will be able to make decisions for their own health and wellness? Dare I say, if men could get pregnant, this wouldn't even be a topic. All the guys, let's all let's all set appointments to get vasectomies. We are women singing, waiting. We know pain. And while some view abortions as babies being killed, as I once did before praying for a deeper understanding, laws that restrict and take away freedoms are never on the side of Jesus and a God of justice. And as we continue in this time of gathering and lament, reproductive justice is what we cry out to the God of all for. We will continue to be doing this work of reproductive justice. Reproductive justice is what we seek, is what we pray for, is what 
we work for. But if I could rock your theological noodle, I submit to you that my Bible teaches me that God is pro-choice also. And some people will say, well, Bishop, you're a man of God. Are you pro-abortion? I am pro-human and civil rights. Old Testament says, I have set before you life and death. Therefore, I'm not going to legislate the answer for you. This is not just about reproductive rights. This is about voting rights. It's about civil rights. It's about human rights. This, this is just the beginning of a demonic agenda, and the church has to get in the gap. Hmm. All right, I want to hear your response. I know you have one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of responses. Um, I, I really, you know, it. this is a doctrine of demons, mm. you know? I mean, let's just call it what it is. Um, these guys are partnering with the spirit of Molech child sacrifice. And so it's important for people in this season to have discernment. Mm -hmm. You know, we really need discernment. And biblical illiteracy across America is at an all-time high. People mm -hmm. don't know the Bible. They don't know the Word of God. Yeah. They're turning it, tuning into the, you know, the fake woke media to get their advice on what the Bible says. They need to turn to the Bible. Yeah. Read it. Mm -hmm. Remember what it says, because it's very clear in the way it addresses abortion, child sacrifice, sexuality, all of the issues that we have today, yeah. it, it addresses those. Yeah. Um, Sean, in the introduction of your book, you say the only way truth can be silenced is when no one is bold enough to speak it. Well, what yeah, you... and before you do that, so your book, Bold, <laughs> Moving Forward in Faith, Not Fear, here's the book, and I understand you went through a couple of Christian publishers that once they read it, they were like, oh, it's too controversial. I mean, it's been canceled. <laughs> it's been canceled twice. Oh, my by goodness. By two major publishers. The last one was HarperCollins, who actually sought me out to write a book on boldness. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, what's cool Maybe is... Maybe you're a little too bold for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of think that, you know, the resistance against the message proves how much we need it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Even, even the, the, you know, the pushing against it. And, you know, this book is not even political. It's yeah. just me talking about my story and standing yeah. up and, and biblical values and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, it, it's been a struggle, but I think it's a message that, that right. the world needs to hear. So the, what I was going to say is, why do you think so many people are being silent? What do you think are the main reasons that people are afraid to speak the truth? Well, I think that, the, you know, you have cancel culture. You have, um, you have the, 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 the forces that rage that, you know, I mean, really, it's the principalities and powers that don't want the truth of who God is to be known. Mm -hmm. um, there's people that they don't want absolutes. They don't want to be defined according to the Bible. They want to let culture define them. And so if you don't go along to those narratives, um, you're, you're canceled, you know, and you know, Jesus dealt with this, disciples dealt with this, the, everybody in revival history dealt with this. And, you know, to me, I feel like the greater the resistance, the greater the breakthrough. You know, mm -hmm. if they're trying to silence us on issues, even more so should we speak out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the truth is coming out concerning this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, we've done all the shows with the doctors right. And, right. and now, you know, all of these people are dying that have been fully vaccinated and fully boosted and all that's another whole show. We've got a whole website um, with that, with all those shows that I've done with them. And there was a lot more behind it than a virus. We know right. that now. It was about control. Mm -hmm. right. It's about one world order. It's about everything that they're actually talking about publicly. Right. You recognize that early, but you were one of the only really individuals that I know of that stepped out and said, we're still going to have church and we're going to worship. And you went to all these cities where they were saying, you cannot do this. Tell us a little bit about how did God give you the courage to do it and what happened when you showed up? Well, I mean, I give, I give all the credit to my missionary experience with the persecuted church. Mm. I think that I really learned a lot all those years in the Middle East and Iraq and Afghanistan and India and China and Saudi Arabia and North Korea and the places the Lord sent me. I learned boldness from the early church. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's something I don't, I don't know that it, it can be taught as much as it's caught. Mm, yeah. And so, um, and so when I, when, when we faced 2020 and we had, you know, these governors, tyrannical governors, we had the media, we had everybody saying, Hey, strips, strip clubs, casinos, bars, marijuana dispensaries, they're open, they're essential, but the church is the problem. The church is the issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I just call it hypocrisy. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 we just started to gather. And I was blown away to realize. At first, I thought, man, we're going to be alone. There's not going to be many with us. And here we go, city to city to city, thousands of believers mm. Show up. looking for leadership. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, you had some some controversy. I mean, there were there were times when they, they tried to shut you down or, mm-hmm. or, you know, said you're absolutely not. What were some of the cities that they said no, but you ac- actually got to go in and do it? Oh, man, we got... We got find in LA, find in Phoenix, find in Nashville, find in uh, New Orleans. We got uh, pepper sprayed in Mason, Seattle. We got barric- the parts barricaded in Portland. We had, I mean, I could go on and on with the levels of resistance. Satanists mm-hmm. come against us, Antifa come against us, protesters. But honestly, going back to what I said earlier, the cities with the greatest level of resistance and most intensity were the ones God broken through mm. the most powerful. Wow. And what kind of things happened? I know that there were people saved, of course, right. people healed, people delivered, set free. I mean, were you shocked at what God was doing right out there in the open air? By the way, open air worship is what yeah. was going on. But look, yeah. there's some of the pictures there. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? Baptizing it, it, it really people. was. And, and I think <coughs> I, what, was, what blew my mind is that I... You know, sometimes we don't realize the pain and the trauma people are going through. Mm-hmm. We didn't realize the addi- the level of addiction, the isolation, the depression, the hopelessness that was happening in that season. And that made people so desperate for a savior, so desperate for deliverance, so desperate for freedom. And so, you know, the ministry opportunities mm-hmm. were unlike anything I've ever seen in America. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I know that you've probably heard in the news where the I believe it was the WHO, the head of the WHO has now come out and said that he's going to declare an emergency with monkeypox. Right. Do you think that people are going to fall for it again? Oh, gosh, I hope not. I mean, I I mean, we got to stand up. Yeah. (laughs) And and I think I mean, and I don't even want to speak specifically on the on the the, how that virus spreads, because it's it's pretty gnarly, Mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, there's only certain situations that you can actually get it in, Mm -hmm. you know, and it and it transmits through you know, homosexuals, it transmits Mm -hmm. through that, Mm -hmm. that relationship. And so, but I mean, I think Americans and and people around the world, I think they're starting to be like, you know what? We fell for it once. It's not going to happen. We're not going to fall for it again. Yeah. We recognize the agendas behind this. The science consistently changed. The rules consistently changed. And really like none of y'all know what the heck you're doing. You right, know, yeah. I think that that's like the bottom line. And the people that made the rules didn't follow them. No, they so didn't. why they are we didn't. even listening to them anyways? Exactly. Talk about what is at stake if we don't use our voices and be bold. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the future of the nation is at stake. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that we're in this fight right now. And, you know, we, we need people to bring definition Right. We need people to bring clarity and definition to the word of the Lord, to these cultural issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I feel like this could be one of the greatest hours for the church because Mm -hmm. I feel like the kind of the cool church relevant thing is kind of dying. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe let's not redefine things. Maybe let's just keep the definitions of what they are. (laughs) Right. Yeah. But I mean, who's going to speak the word of God? Who's going to who's going to speak the truth to culture? And I think that we're in an era right now where people are hungry for that, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and this generation is having such an identity crisis Mm -hmm. that when you do these services, do you find that young people who are so confused about their identity, that something happens when they get in the presence of God? Yeah, it's powerful. I mean, we've been doing altar calls for people that are battling uh, sexual addiction, confusion, chaos. We've had people that are in the middle of transition therapy come down and get delivered and saved and Mm -hmm. what's powerful is that it's not this heavy-handed thing it's just like when the presence of god Mm -hmm. comes he makes the most difficult issues or what we think are the most difficult issues like easy Mm. yeah well i wonder um you're going to share your song in just a minute but i want you to kind of set it up Mm -hmm. because again i don't know why it was controversial but it was Mm -hmm. but tell a little bit about how the lord inspired you so when you know when roe v wade was overturned um you know i was of course i was incredibly i was rejoicing i was joyful i was but i was also very sobered and 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 disgusted and bummed at the response of the church right right and i mean we we've talked about that i felt like 
people really miss the moment to give God the glory for what he did. Because only God can accomplish this. I mean, yeah, right. you know, only he could get the credit, and especially in this administration mm -hmm. right now, yeah. that he decided to do it now. Which is so, kind of interesting. It, it's just, it's God just like the Lord. He, he yes. loves to, I think he just loves to mess with us, you know. But, but anyway, I was frustrated, and I was, you know, getting on Twitter and getting on Facebook, and I'm just raging. I'm like, I'm about to call out every pastor, you know. Rah. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, Sean, sing the truth of, of, of seeing the truth of it over a generation that they are made in the image of God. Remind them, mm -hmm. remind them who they are. Songs can go to places where sermons will never go. Yeah. Songs can reach hearts where tweets would never go. Mm -hmm. Like sing a song that can remind them they are made in the image of God, Imago Dei. And this is not just for the unborn. Obviously th that, that's, that's the heart, but it's for people that are ha having an identity crisis. Right. They don't know, you know, they feel like they were born one way, they should have been born another way, but no, it's just speaking, you're fearfully and wonderfully Made. So I got to tell you part of that story because every time you say something, it triggers that uh, that near death, the man that died for mm -hmm. eleven hours. Um, when when his when when the angels, well, it's a long story, but anyway, the angels came and there was something going on, and you'll have to watch the, the story. But when they came, basically to rescue him, he um, he said he noticed it like in an honoring way. They they. There were three of them. They just kind of, you know, you know how like in the Asian culture, though, when you walk. Right. Bow. And so um, he thought to himself, I wonder why they, they, they're doing that. And then one of them speaks up and says, because when we look at you, we see our creator. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, you know, I don't think we realize how special we are to the father and that yeah. we are created in his image in every eternal soul should be given an opportunity right. to live on this earth and fulfill their destiny. Right. And how many have we lost? How many Billy Grahams right. have we lost? How many Sean Foyts right. have we lost? How many, you know, um, ministers and missionaries have been aborted right. here in America? Right. So um, the song then, not only it talks about being created in the image of God, what, what else does it say as to why Christian radio and stuff didn't want to play it? I mean... Christian radio, K Love, all these groups. I mean, they've just on just they've just gone so woke, and they refuse. I mean, it, and it's sad because it's like the life issue is not a political issue. Going back to what we were mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's a biblical issue. Mm -hmm. And my heart was, we can show pictures all day of ba of babies being torn limb from limb, right? We've seen mm -hmm. those, but what if we can inspire a generation? Mm -hmm. Right, not okay. shame a generation, but inspire a generation. Say, no, no, this, this baby. And here's what's cool: we released it. Of course, Spotify wouldn't playlist it. iTunes refused to promote it. All that kind of stuff, which I'm used to. It's it's sourced at the top of the charts. I get three messages back from women that were on their way to an abortion clinic. Mm. Somebody texted them this song because they knew what they were struggling with. Mm. They stopped. They broke down weeping in their car. Oh wow, that is amazing. And and decided to keep their baby. And so that's my heart with this song, that yeah. it would remind people how special life is. Okay. Well, I want Sean to get ready to do that song, and I know that it's going to be a blessing. After this song, we'll come back with more. And, of course, Sean in his new book, Bold, Moving Forward in Faith, Not Fear. Let's go to that right now. Before my 
Well, Isaiah chapter 6, uh, this is a word I really feel in my heart to, to share with you guys today. Considering uh, the situation, what's happening all around the world, inflation, gas prices, the political climate, um, it, we're living in a wild time. And I think it's okay for us to take a minute and say, okay, we're living in a crazy season, okay? And how do we respond to all of the things that are raging around us. And I love Isaiah chapter six, and I wanna read this over you and declare this over you today. It says, verse one, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. Now I wanna stop there. So as we know in the history of Israel, in the history of this nation, when kings die, when, when, when suddenly the, the king who's over everything in the country dies, it's a great tragedy. It's a great trial. It releases confusion. People don't know what's gonna happen. People don't know who's gonna take over the throne. Uh, there's, there's in many cases mass pandemonium, you know, weeping breaks out, mourning breaks out. You know, it's not, they don't, they're not in democracies where they just, the next person that's up, like, Nobody knows what's going to happen. And so it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I had a superior revelation. I saw the Lord seated on the throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now, I love this in verse two, just for fun. Above them were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying basically gives us the picture that heaven is one freaky place, you know? I mean, there's these creatures with wings and eyes everywhere. And it says this, that each creature was speaking to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. I was in South Africa two weeks ago um, and we held our first Let Us Worship event outside of America in Johannesburg. Uh, they had just come out of lockdown, uh, and this was the largest church gathering, probably the largest gathering of humans that's happened in the nation in three years. And so we were gathering in Johannesburg, 
And uh, eight to 10,000 people showed up. It was crazy. I mean, this is by far the largest. They came out of lockdown two weeks earlier. A lot of churches haven't been meeting. All the restrictions were finally done. And we were out together, eight to 10,000 people worshiping together. And the chief of police was with us. He was the chief of police over the Johannesburg region that we were in. And he, he came on stage and You know, they're battling, you know, 74 homicides a day in that nation right now, unprecedented wave of crime, unemployment, economic, you know, their their currency, the rand is tanking right now. I mean, a lot of issues, right? So this guy, the police gets on the stage, he looks at all of these, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people worshiping. And he says this to me, he starts weeping on the stage, and he says, I've never seen anything like this. I never imagined anything like this. And he t- turned to me and he said, this is the greatest crime prevention strategy we could ever have. People gather together seeking the face of God. He says, criminals can't exist here, you know? It was, it was a powerful moment, and of course, we had an altar call. People came down to the front. They got rid of their drugs. They got rid of their suicide medicine. They got rid of their anger. They got freed and delivered. It, it, it was powerful. But what was amazing was that that country is in crisis, And in the midst of that, we gathered together and we appealed to heaven. We said, God, show us a greater revelation than the current narrative that we're facing. Show us something the media isn't telling us. Show us something. And and we saw heaven and we experienced the presence of God. And we joined together with all of the angels. And I love it. It says that the angels in Isaiah 6, it says that they're saying to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. That means in the moment of tragedy, in the moment of trial, in the moment of confusion and the shaking, that means that God is still speaking. Heaven is still declaring there is glory here right now. And so my heart today, and I wanna, I wanna share with you one more verse. If you'll turn to Hebrews chapter 12, I wanna leave you with this verse, but I, I, I feel like we're in the middle of a shaking. It's going to continue. It probably will even get worse. Who knows what's going to happen with recession? Who knows what's going to happen with inflation? Who knows? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy right now. However, in the seasons of shaking, God raises up a people that will not be shaken. In the seasons where everything is breaking, people are freaking out, heaven is declaring this place is still full of his glory. And it says in Hebrews 12, Verses 26, it says, at his time, at time, at this time, his voice shook the earth, and now he has promised, once more I will shake not only earth, but I will shake the heavens. The word once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. This is for a lot of you out there. There are things that are being shaken and removed off of your life so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Doesn't mean that God causes this, but God will use the shaking. Look at this season we just came out of, 2020, 2021. Insane, right? Everything was shaken. Why? Everything that was shaken, things were pulled out of our lives. Things, our our whole worlds were rearranged. And guess what? Now is the greatest time for the church to be the truth to the world and to remind the world that we belong to a kingdom that will not be shaken. It says in verse 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and worship God. How do we respond in seasons of shaking? We're thankful and we give praise to God. We're thankful and we worship. And so I wanna pray over you today that as this shaking increases and to whatever your degree you are feeling it in your life right now, it could be just at the gas pump, it could be with your job, it could be with your family, it could be a lot of tension right now. However you're feeling it, I am praying today that you will remember that you are receiving a kingdom that will not be shaken and your response would be thanksgiving and praise. Listen, God is raising up a bold church in this season, in the season of shaking, in the season of darkness, receive this prayer. Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, I thank you right now that as everything is being shaken around us that can be shaken, you are revealing in us a kingdom that will not be shaken. I pray for every single person out there. Lord, fill them with boldness, fill them with courage, fill them with hope today, God. Lord, that you are raising up a kingdom, Lord, that the whole world is gonna see and the whole world's gonna know. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives today. 
I want to ask Jonathan to come and join me in prayer today. Thanks so much, Sean, for that great word. You know, I have a stack of prayer requests today. These are people that have called in from all over the world. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you lay your hands on these and just say a prayer for healing, for breakthrough, whatever difficulty these people might be going through today. Yeah. Yeah, Lord, we just release a prayer over every single request that has come in. Lord, you know every issue here. Lord, every issue for every person that has, has, has shared their heart. And I pray, God, that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory, God, that you would come and invade every situation with your power and with your presence today, Lord. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are on the throne and you are in control over the earth, over our lives, over our families, and over every situation today. We love you. We praise your name in Jesus' name.